I'm Teresa Rand, and I'm a contractor who's hired to facilitate the grant process that started in March and runs through August. And with this grant, it really is about the entrepreneurial mindset and infusing that into all curriculum. Whether the students ever want to go into business or not, we believe and the curriculum believes that the entrepre entrepreneurial mindset is important no matter what you do for a living. If you act like an owner, you're going to be very successful in what you do, whether you own the business or not. And I always like to use the example, I was the uh, CEO of the YMCA and all of my branch execs needed to act like owners because there were seven different locations where I couldn't be every day. And those that truly acted like they owned that uh, department or that building were the ones that were highly successful. So I wanna start by reading uh, out of the book because this book is what we're using or what the professors are using and the curriculum from the early uh, from the learning institute early learning institute entrepreneurial learning institute uh, is the curriculum that's being infused in the programs right now cosmetology barbering business and we're fortunate to have dr erica tillman here this morning who's running the business cohort. We're working closely together. I know a couple of you have offered to give presentations that we'll be doing on Zoom, and Dr. Tillman and I are the ones that will talk about what those topics are, and we'll do those on Zoom so we can record them because the students go from school here from seven in the morning to nine at night. So there's never a perfect time, but we wanna have all of these available for recording so that they can go back to them. So Dr. Tillman, thank you for making time to be here today. But this book says entrepreneurship is a mindset. It is a mindset that can empower ordinary people to create extraordinary lives. It is a mindset that exposes opportunity and ignites ambition. It is a mindset that fosters innovation and initiative, creativity, curiosity, and lifelong learning, as well as the self-reliance and resourcefulness of which we are all capable. So I thought that would set the tone for the morning. And then if you look on the board behind the speakers, um, where it says persistence, opportunity, wealth, knowledge, brand, community, action, and choice. We'll be talking about those individually. Our speakers each have a card at their chair that uh, I'll ask them to speak on the word that they got at their chair. And what that just means to them in their business. There's no right or wrong answer. It's what does that mean to you in your business? And so we'll talk about each of those words as we move forward today. But I wanted to start by asking each of you, what is your definition of the entrepreneurial mindset? I'll pass the microphone around. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. And I'd like for you to introduce yourself when you first speak. Just tell us who you are and what your business is and maybe how long you've been in business. Hello, my name is Dawn O'Connor and I own Daytona Elevator. Uh, to answer your question, Teresa, um, my idea or my thought of an entrepreneur is I own the responsibility to succeed or to fail. And no one else owns it, I own it. So as as I guide myself, my employees, everyone through my business, I'm always um, circling back to the fact that I might fail, I might succeed, but if I do, it's on me. And so the individual is responsible for the outcome, and that's what I see an entrepreneur as. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Shailesh Patel. Um, I own an engineering and environmental company called uh, Dredging and Marine Consultants in Port Orange. And to me, the entrepreneurial mindset um, as a business owner, um, it's not about a question of success or failure, uh, because for me, it's always been failure is not an option. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you come through challenges as a, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, entrepreneur um, or even person that's l working for me, one of the things I always tell them is, you're, you are going to make mistakes, but your ability 
to actually find a solution and pivot, right? So it's not failure, it's how you think about pivoting to then become successful. To me, that is the entrepreneurial mindset, you know, because I, I grew up in, in Zambia, and so I'll tell you, uh, I feel America is the greatest country in the world, and in America, you cannot fail. If you do, as Don just said, it's on you. There are so many opportunities. So as an entrepreneur or as having that mindset, it's how do I see opportunities in things that are around me? And there's plenty of opportunities. So thank you. Thank you, Shalish. My name is Bill Gallagher. Hi, uh, I'm the founder and owner of a company called SolarFit. We uh, install solar power systems uh, throughout the state, mostly seven different counties, but I agree with Shea Leash 100%. America is the finest country in the world by far. We have more opportunity than, than anywhere else if we seek to take advantage of it. Um, the entrepreneurial nine, uh, mindset to me is, um, is it's about creativity. When you wake up in the morning and you go to sleep at night and you're thinking about how to make things better, um, Tony Robbins, I think you've all heard of Tony Robbins, his philosophy is what's, what's not perfect yet. And if you have that philosophy, you're going to succeed. Uh, maybe not monetarily, but you'll succeed in life. And, and I think that's, that's really the goal of an entrepreneur. Good morning, my name is Nancy Benet. I am the CEO of Fix It Accounting. Um, so my idea of entrepreneurship is doing whatever it takes. That's what we do. You can't pick and choose and go, that's not my job. No, we look at it from a, a bigger picture and decide what needs to be done. And truly the buck stops here. If there's something that needs to be done in my business, if it's taken out the trash, I'm gonna do that if there's nobody else to to do it or picking up trash in the parking lot. It doesn't matter. We can't be above doing something that's gonna help us succeed. We all have to you know, put our whole being into it because truly that's the, the mindset with success or failure. If you're gonna say that I, that's not my job, then you are going to fail because truly you have to do whatever it takes. Hi, I'm Ken Phelps. I'm the Vice President of Resource Development for the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce. So I'm one of the examples Teresa mentioned of not owning the business. But uh, for me, the entrepreneurial mindset um, is about having the creativity to solve whatever problem is presented to your organization that day. And I think it's I think the word mindset is important because I don't think you can just wake up and say, oh, hey, you know what, Tuesday this week, I don't have any meetings, I'm going to be entrepreneurial that day. It doesn't work like that. Um, sometimes it is just being aware of whatever the next great business opportunity is for your organization. And it may not be something you've planned. Uh, the, the Jim Collins model, good to great. You know, th those companies that became great made a decision to do so. And in a number of cases, it wasn't what they were doing prior to that decision. Uh, the other aspect of the mindset for me with related to this is sometimes it's not the best business opportunity. It's how you survive and we've all, uh, we've all done that in our organizations over this last year. You know, nobody was anticipating a global pandemic January of 2020. We've all adapted and done different things and you have to have the entrepreneurial mindset to figure out, okay, well, I can't just throw up my hands and give up. What do I have to do to continue to be successful given the new circumstances we've been presented? And it's a 24 seven, 365 mentality. That's why it needs to be a mindset and not just a, a chore or a, a task on your list of things to do. Hello, my name is Sean with Dream Home Inspections. I've um, been in business since 2004. Um, my entrepreneurial mindset is inspiring. You have to inspire your employees. You have to inspire your clients. You have to inspire the whole business itself. You have to use creativity to be able to inspire. You have to be able to show and set an example. So you really have to kind of be the business. You are marketing yourself, but you turn the business into a marketing aspect. So your branding, your logo is all through by an inspiring and inspiration. So that's what I really kind of have to tell you guys to move forward with is, is having those inspirations and having those creativities. They really will make you move forward. 
All right. So the next question, and then the students have some questions, but why did you decide to go into business for yourself? And Ken, <laughs> you won't answer this one, but why did you decide to go into business for yourself? Why do I always have to go first? I know you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, why did I decide to go into business for myself? Um, I went into a family business. I took over from my father. Um, I'm actually an HR professional. That's, that's what I am. So I'm well prepared. I was well prepared to take over a business, um, not quite an elevator business. So uh, my decision was HR is too boring, restrictive, um, I too confined, uh, not, I'm not my thing. I'm much more creative, I'm more of a maverick. And in the HR field, um, I was very constricted and just it wasn't a right fit for me. So I realized quickly that I needed to do something where I had control. And the opportunity presented itself, I uh, my father has been begging me to come down to Florida. I'm Canadian. And finally, I bit the bullet, did it. And I would never, I shouldn't say never, but never um, choose to work for someone else. Uh, working for yourself is liberating. So um, it just, I was presented with the opportunity of family business. I saw the benefits. I also saw the, the pitfalls, um, and I chose the benefits outweighed the, you know, whatever negative aspects in owning a business could have. There are always ups and downs, and I chose, you know, to ride that wave. Yeah, uh, 19 years now. So why, why did I choose to go into the business that I currently am doing. So very interesting story. I just told you I grew up in Zambia. My passion, and probably even today at some point in my life I've told many folks, is to be a farmer. That's what I wanted to do, right? I wanted to be a farmer uh, when I grew up. Um, but when I came to the United States, I actually came to study agriculture uh, at North Carolina and then um, University of Florida. But what had happened was when I was uh, doing my doctorate work there, Actually, interestingly, with the phosphate industry, you've all read the big spill that's happened with the containment facility, so I'm very familiar with what goes on. Long story short, um, started working um, in my graduate studies for the phosphate mining industry to help a, an engineering company with actually the phosphogypsum stack, which is a mining byproduct. And I thought like, hey, okay, uh, this might be interesting twist um, in, in my career, and the company actually offered me a job, so I'm like, all right, be a farmer, work for somebody, you know, which one? So my mentor, my parents called them, and long story short, they said, hey, it's an opportunity, see what you can do, you can always come back and be a farmer, right? So good advice, uh, I joined the company um, in a few years, uh, learned a lot about the engineering business, right? I didn't know anything. If you would have told me when I started my career that I would own a coastal engineering company, I would have laughed and said, never. I don't even know what it's about. But that's the thing. You pivot, you find uniqueness. So whatever I learned in my agriculture studies, soils, nitrogen, phosphorus, equated to the environmental arena, piqued my interest, started looking at dredging projects, right? So the muck material, I'm passionate about muck, dredging muck. Um, that's gonna be my lifelong dream. And I tell you, you, you read about the Indian River Lagoon, the water quality, it's all about dredging muck. And I, I saw that opportunity, I said, you know, no company focuses on this specific problem. Let me be that expert, right? So that's what I looked at. And when I was working for this company, they, they moved me to Daytona to open their first regional office. And, and I grew up in a, in a business household, so my father had owned many businesses. And so at dinner time, we're talking about business, so I kind of had a sense of that, right? Um, and fortunately, um, when I got to that point of pivoting, I said, you know, I've worked in an engineering company, 
I can do this, but it's nerve wracking, right? You've never done it. Now this is yours. Like you have to put in your money. You don't get a paycheck anymore two weeks, every two weeks, right? So you have to figure all that out. And again, went to my father and my father said, look, we come from a business background. Give it a shot. What's the worst thing that'll happen to you? And the answer was, I'll get another job. Same thing I was doing before, work for somebody else. But he said, what if, what if it becomes successful, which I know you'll be able to do, and you can enjoy the lifestyle you want. And again, as Don said, it gives you that flexibility, right? I am here today, this morning, because I have staff that can manage my company. I don't have to worry about it. I can do this, right? It's exposing my company because I'm providing community service, but at the same time, it gives me that ability, right? So entrepreneur, why did I get into this business? Specifically for that reason is that I chose that I wanted to have a lifestyle that I control, right? Um, it is a tough road, but you can do it if you put your mind to it. So thank you. Sure. So your, your one was Shailesh Patel by himself, right? One person. Um, second year, um, I had a little bit of revenue and I had a part-time employee who actually she was with me for two to three years after that. As I started picking up, and again, the relationships I built with my clients while working for somebody else, it took a while. You know, they couldn't give me a job because the first question is, what if something happens to you? What happens to our projects, right? So that, th those are realities. Um, and so that's kind of how it pivoted. But in my third year, my accountant said, Shailish, you've got enough revenue. You're going to grow. Hire someone so you can get out and market and bring in more revenue and get more staff. So today, we have a staff of 10 people. We have four offices on the east coast of Florida because that's our target market area. And we have sustained and grown over the last 19 years. I've been in business now for 19 years. And talking about management, so you bring up people with the entrepreneurial mindset. So my staff, they understand what it is to be in my shoe. Not everybody's gonna do that. But if I can find a couple, which I do, they know what it means to be in my shoes and they make decisions that way. So it helps me, and what it does is it elevates the entire company, right? So that, that's it, thank you. Well, Steve, what they didn't think they went into business year one, they kind of did what they wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Because I think we all know that's not the case, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, one of the reasons I'm here, probably the, the reason I'm here is not to, uh, necessarily encourage people to go to be an entrepreneur is to tell you the pitfalls of what not to do because I've done it all. Uh, the reason I'm in business, I think a lot has to do with heredity, believe it or not. Uh, my, uh, my parents grew up in the Adirondacks of upstate New York, very independent people. My grandfather worked in the lumber woods, cutting down trees and skidding out logs and, and riding down the rivers, if you heard about log jams. I mean, these are very, very very serious and determined people. They just choose not to lose. And I grew up with that kind of mentality and, and looking for, looking for um, challenges, you know, from uh, uh, racing snowmobiles to racing automobiles to aerobatic airplanes to all these things that most people look like you're completely crazy. I just, I thought that was absolutely normal. So that's not a normal thing to do. But it does inspire you to take, um, I'm not going to say unnecessary risk, but you're not afraid of things. And I think if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you got to realize it's a tough road. You know, you can work any 70 hours a week you want, but it's the most rewarding business you can have because you're in, you're in control of your destiny. Whether you succeed or whether you fail, it's entirely up to you. And Shaylee's absolutely right. As, as you grow and you start uh, adding people, like-minded people, and we've gone through a lot of people, we, you know, but right now we've got, we've got employees that have been with us 25 years, 20 years, 17, Teresa knows we've got a really good group of people, but they all think like us. It's, it's, we're not money motivated. It's all about enjoying what you do and, and growing. You have to grow. If you, you, you just got to keep growing. But anyway, that's what got me into the business. I, would, I want to...
Sure, even, even you know, something is uh, like flying an airplane, right? I mean, there's, there's a risk to flying an airplane, but if you really, if you study everything you do and you become comfortable with it, the risk is mitigated. And that's really what we're doing with our business every day. And I think, you know, you'd made the comment about a COVID kind of sneaking up on us and taking us, we pivoted. We, we had to do what we had to do to, to get by and our business is stronger because of it. We now have over 20,000 satisfied customers and it's growing exponentially, not because of anything I did, but because you know, ev even the people in, in our company who have control over whether it's the operational part of it or the management part, they take risks every day, but they're measured risk. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So why did I go into business for myself? That's a very good question. Um, I did not want to. I've, I was born an entrepreneur and I failed in business five times before this. And it was devastating because every time, one time I had to file bankruptcy, I, I was a CPA. It was just like so emotionally devastating to me. But um, there was really no other choice this time. I uh, got a divorce. There were four small children that were hungry. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were hungry. Yeah, that's a good motivation too. You know, I don't look back on that and think that it's a bad thing because it really prompted me to do whatever I had to do to get the, the job done. So anyway, uh, the four children, I was um, contracted to buy this guy's practice, his tax practice. It was just a little bitty small town thing into land. And at the last minute, after I had signed a three-year lease, he backed out of the deal and gave the business to his daughter. So I was sitting there with the four little kids and their mouths open, hungry, <laughs> and a big lease to pay and no income. And uh, my husband had left me with $600,000 in debt from previous business ventures. And so I didn't really have any other thing to do. It, it was the middle of the recession. There were no jobs anywhere. So I just really sat down and said, how am I gonna do this? I'm in this little bitty small town everybody has an accountant. There are no new businesses starting because it's a terrible recession. How am I gonna make this work? And I, I did, we started marketing to people with tax liens and it grew from there. And today, instead of being a tiny little bitty uh, tax prep firm in Deland, Florida, we do the entire state for IRS problem resolution, which then brings in clients for accounting and tax work. So we're super busy, we grow all the time. Um, back to staff and them taking an entrepreneurial role in the company. My people have mostly been with me, you know, five plus years. We're only a 10 year old company. They stay and they, they've planned to make it their career. So they are very um, inventive with improving processes, making customers happy. They take care of everything. And like Shayla said, this is why I can be here because they are there taking care of things. And I couldn't do this without them. And they know that. And you know, they're, they're very invested as employees. And I try to make that as great for them as I can. And I recognize which ones really step up. And so even if you don't wanna be an entrepreneur and go through whatever challenges that brings and you wanna be an employee, be the best employee that you can because it pays off, really. You'll get promoted and you'll have more responsibility and it will be just a truly great thing in your company. Because you deal with so many businesses, I think you can reframe the question a little bit. And I see you're really turning to all the <laughs> So actually, so I was gonna share something of a, I mean, not, not a, a cautionary tale, but something that will help people also see that other side, like you know the story Nancy just shared. So uh, in a past life, I spent about 10 years working in radio and television, worked in sports and did a number of other things, and uh, you know, used an entrepreneurial mindset after one day we, I was working for a subsidiary of Comcast and we had a meeting at their offices in Penn's Landing in Philadelphia, and the, the meeting was to quote unquote, discuss the direction of the show. Well, when you walk into that meeting and HR is sitting in the room, that discussion's not gonna end like you think it should end. But one of the gentlemen who was working on the show, the, it was a high school sports show, one of the gentlemen that was working on that, he and I said, you know, we could do this. We had all of the aspects of putting a show together. 
we bootstrapped our own operation, put together a demo tape. We drove all over the state of Pennsylvania because we had a different model than the cable operation that, that Comcast had to offer. Our timing worked against us a little bit because of when local TV stations had availability in their time that had already been booked. We were doing this in May because of the timing of the meeting. Their schedule was already set in January. But to a person across the state, all of these stations said, we, we've filled our time slots for this year, but we want you to come back and talk to us in December and January because we, we see the vision for this. We see what you're, you're working on. We did get an opportunity to go into one local station in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania market. Uh, our first TV show aired on September 1st, and it was just the most incredibly proud moment I've had from a business standpoint. It's like, here, look what we did. We put this out there. So 10 days later, two planes flying to the World Trade Center and other places around the United States, and everything came to a halt. And so it, it, but I had to be creative and okay, what am I gonna do now? So I actually found other opportunities from that standpoint, but I could have very easily thrown my head something, yeah, it's not gonna work. You know, and some of those have been working for other people and some of those have been working for myself and I've bounced back and forth between the two, but that entrepreneurial mindset has flowed through everything that we've done. So I would say to you, if you go out into a venture and it doesn't turn out like you would think or expect, that doesn't mean your journey's done. It just means you, you've got to turn somewhere and make a different decision. Um, why I went into business, um, I, it, was, it just was a decision. Um, my father and I kind of like looked into our opportunities and um, just saw that we had a great avenue. Home inspection is a new kind of service that's just been recently kind of been state regulated. It's only been regulated since 2010. <laughs> so, I mean, there was just a lot of like negligence going on in my uh, industry. So w my father had a terrible home inspection, saw the process and was like, what is going on? Th this, is, this is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the, the report was handwritten. The, uh, just everything about it just was like a, a guy with a tool belt just looking around your house and saying, hey, hey, everything's fine. So, so we were like, this is a great opportunity, and that's, that's the word that I would like to highlight, is opportunity to try to uh, better the industry, better the, uh, the field, create more opportunities for, for everyone. Then that got me thinking, and when we were in business, we were only being very, very small, just, just my father and I doing minimal jobs a day. Um, and I was thinking, man, we can really kind of grow this. People are really liking how we're bringing the professionalism to it, uh, bringing the type of branding, bringing like digitalized reports. And, and with uh, me being more on the tech side, I was able to kind of incorporate a lot of different kinds of softwares and, and things throughout the years that we've been in business. Um, that, that, that is a great opportunity for creativity. So, I mean, you do have a lot of different opportunities. Then we were able to hire employees. Once we hired employees, it was fantastic to see the employees grow. I mean, one of the girls in my, uh, my, my office manager, she never thought she was gonna own a house. She bought a house three years ago. I mean, she's with her entire family. They just got, bought two brand new cars. She has a career. She has something that, that like, she can stay with. She's been with me for 10 years. My, my office manager's been there continuously growing and we've been seeing her grow also. So those are great uh, self-accomplishments that just make you feel good, make you feel like you're contributing to society, make you feel like you're, uh, you're part of something. And, and that's what a business is, is opportunities to be able to affect um, our community. And, and our community is very important, so. Thank you very much. I know, Pamela, you had some questions because you sent those to me. And then Giselle, I know you have one, and Manassas as well. If you have one, fine. If not, you can take notes and listen. So. Okay. Um, is there a difference between a small business and an entrepreneur? Is there a difference between a small business and an entrepreneur? And I would say yes. Um, a small business you have responsibility for others, not just yourself. You can be an entrepreneur and have, on, and have the responsibility for yourself. 
so small or big, that's what I would. Instead of passing around, I'll let her ask her other questions as well. And I can tell you for that question, I'm an entrepreneur. I have no employees and don't want any employees. I spent 30 years with employees. Uh, so I know I limit myself a little bit by doing that. But I'm at the point in my life and age where I want to be an entrepreneur and be able to do, and I have contract. I have two team members that are under contract, but not you know, really employees. So I'm not, I don't consider myself a small business. I consider myself an entrepreneur. So that's why I asked that question, because I'm going in, I'm cosmetology, so I want to open a mobile um, salon. And of course, it would just be moi, you know. So if it was, what is my plan B, you know? So that's my. Okay, um, first I want to say um, I realize that we really get great learning at Daytona State College because while listening, I was hearing about risk and you know all the stuff that I was learning about in school presently. And so I want to thank the professionals for bringing that to the forefront. My question is, is, there, is it ever too late to develop and pursue a dream? I am a mom of a 30-year-old and a 20-year-old, and my life has been a little different. I'm now in the United States, but I've had a passion for technology all my life, and I am determined to leave a legacy for my children. Like I was listening to her, there is ups and there is down, but I see the, the, the positivity really for me outweighs any pitfalls that are there. So is there ever a limit to say it's too late to pursue your dreams? I'm dying here, but I'm going to let you guys answer. <laughs> it may take more than one. I see a couple of hands. Thank you, Actually, that's, that's an excellent question. Is, you know, is it too late? My answer is no, it's never too late. In fact, when you look at some of the folks like Colonel Sanders and stuff like that, right? When you look at the age at which they develop their restaurant chains and stuff like that, that's an inspiration. That's why I said, if, if you're in America, failure shouldn't be even in your vocabulary. It's not an option, right? So what I'm saying to you, because, so I'll give you my example, right? I was 38 when I started my company. I had two little young boys, five and seven. Right? No more income coming in, those paychecks every two weeks, right? I was married, uh, my wife was very supportive of me, but I knew that I could make it happen. So one of the things you said is, you're, you've always had this desire to want to do what you want, right? That's the first, I think one of the most important ingredients is to have that passion. You believe in yourself, you know you have a passion for something, now you just have to take the next step, right? So when you come to venues like this, Take advantage, you know, don't, don't just say, hey, thank you very much, great presentations by you professionals. Meet us, give us your information, because I, I may know somebody who's looking for exactly what you're looking for, and I can tell you, we, we all have that one person, and we can say, hey, I think I might have a candidate that you might enjoy having in your company because she sounds really passionate. Take it from there, right? So my answer is, no, it's never too late. Until you stop breathing and you're pronounced dead, um, I think you have an opportunity, okay? Yeah, I was 45 when I started my business and had four little kids, so certainly it's never too late. And even today, I keep starting new businesses. So don't let your age be an obstacle. You're only as young as you feel. Like, we have a choice of how we think. I'm having more fun in my 50s than I ever did any other time of my life. So go for it. So what are the principles of an entrepreneurship? What are some of the principles of entrepreneurship? I think what we'll do, because that's such a great question and certainly you can answer it, but I think it would be helpful if you look at the card on your sheet or, or on your seat, because those are the lessons in the book and, and it goes in line with this question about what are your principles. So if you would use her question with your word, does that make sense? And that way we can get to all of you with that. Thank you, Pamela. So 
what are the principles for entrepreneurship? And I'm going to use my word choice. This couldn't have been a better word for me. This is my life choice. Um, you have the choice to work hard. You have the choice to not work hard. Some of my employees will work till five, go home, lay on the couch, have a beer. You know, on the weekends, they'll go have cookouts, go to the beach, and they'll do that for decades. My choice has not been to do that. I have a choice to choose to work hard, to choose not to work hard. And I, I, I often relay this message to employees who think, because ultimately when you're successful, people will think you're rich. And when you're rich, they forget how you got rich. And you get rich by working hard, risk and reward. I took the risk for the reward or lack thereof. That was my choice. If your choice is to go home and drink and lay on the couch and have your weekends and live in a tent, I'm all for it. But that's not my choice. So I think you, with choice, you have the choice of employees. You have the choice to choose your employees, which is critical. Choose your employees well. If you do not choose your employees and you do not focus on that initially, it, you're, you will be set back in your entrepreneurial goals. So that is critical. Um, I choose to have a fantastic Christmas party. Everybody gets TVs and I blow it out. It is just, it is, it's awesome. My bonuses are off the charts if you work really well or not. And I have the choice to fire you for cause. I have the choice to put a drug workforce policy in place. I have a choice not to. I have the choice. So. Entrepreneurship and choice and principles, it all boils down to you, your personality, what you want to, what you want for yourself, what you want for your employees, what you want for your family, and it is your choice. And you will receive pushback as you, I found, as you become successful and be prepared for it. Because not everybody chooses the way you do. And I think it's critical that you push back and, and explain to them nicely why you are where you are, why you have that nice car, why do you have that nice house, why do you have these nice earrings, why? Thank you. Oh. So the question was, what are the principles of an entrepreneur? And, and I think one thing I would say is uh, you, you have your vision of whatever you want to build, right? Whatever company you want to start, a salon, all right? So, and you might be, like you said, maybe just a, one individual who wants to work, like Teresa. Uh, good, there's, there's pros and cons to both, right? So, but I think the core values, what are your core values? There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of core values. Pick four or five that you see align with the type of business you're putting together. Because, like I said, you never know. You may start off individually, you may pivot, and you will be successful, and you'll say, you know, I can hire another hair salonist, or I have a friend who has a passion for the same thing, and I want to see if they can, they can work with me. I can increase my revenue. Um, soon I can open another branch somewhere else because I see a, an advantage. Uh, maybe I can go service at, at, at an elderly facility or something. You know, like there's always pivot. So your core values matter. And, and I'm telling you, so after 17 years of my business, I had an advisory group, uh, a board of directors, if you will, to my company, because I wanted to say, hey, what, what are my options, right? What, what do I want to do? I was at conflict, again, do I double, triple the revenue and the size of my company, or do I stay where I am, where I'm comfortable, I still have my hair, it's gray, but it's still there, right? What are the options? And these, these are, again, as you grow, you know, you will come across these challenges in your business, and it's how you take it. So core values, number one. My word is action, okay? And 
If you don't take action on anything, like I just said, you've come to this event, there's an opportunity here, but you don't take action, you can take good notes, you can have a good business plan, a great strategy, a growth strategy, but if you don't take action, you might as well just throw it away. It's just a dream, right? I dream a lot, right? But I can sit there and dream and nothing will happen. But if I take action, one step, one thing, think about it, you have 365 days in a year. If I just take one small action every day, I've just taken 365 actions. You're telling me that a few of those aren't gonna come to fruition for you? They will, I mean, inevitably, right? And so taking action, to me, <laughs> as, as much as all these things have a value, if you don't take that first step to where you want to be, to what's in your mind, that dream you have, nothing's gonna happen. So taking action is everything. You don't have to have a business plan with 50 pages when you start off. Everybody tells you that, right? If you go to any seminar, you know what I do? I take one page, smart goals, and I say, what can I accomplish in the next 30 days, 90 days, and a year? And I'll take one to two things that I feel have the most significant impact on what we're gonna do. The rest can wait, because I don't have the time, right? And to answer that question, when I started the business, I was everything from janitor to president of the company and everything in between. That's the reality, my friends. But as Nancy said, nothing is beneath you. If you're willing to work, take action, failure is not an option. All right, thank you. You know, I, I'm, a little, I'm gonna go off a little bit of a tangent and I'm gonna talk about characteristics a little bit too because um, you know, what's a characteristic of an entrepreneur? As far as I'm concerned, you really have to, you have to be organized, right? I can remember when I first started business and all of a sudden all these papers started piling up and I go, what in the world? So I went out and I read, I mean, you ought, you ought to see my library, it's fill this place because I didn't have a mentor. You have an opportunity to have mentor, find somebody and stick to them like glue. It'll save you so much trouble. But I, this one thing I'll never forget was T-R-A-F. It was trash, refer, act, and file. And I put these things on my desk and I started sorting everything and all of a sudden it started making sense. Wait a minute now, this day isn't quite as obtuse as I thought it was. And then I kind of like Shailish, but I, I, I make a list of all the things that I need to do and then I, and I mark them according to degree of, in, what was that word? Importance, exactly. I'd mark them degree of importance and I'd peck away and them, get it done. And then what I didn't get done, it goes to the next. You'll find your own way about how to do that. But you have to be, you have to be organized. You have to be dedicated and disciplined. And you have to love what you're doing. You know, try not to get involved in any enterprise that's, that's going to cause you pain. It, there's no reason to. You know, life's pretty short. Just pick the thing. If it's cosmetology, if it's real estate, whatever it is, and embrace yourself and study and learn everything you can and things will work out just fine. One more thing, I came to work today and one of our gals that's only been with us about six months was smiling ear to ear and I go, How, how's it going? Oh, I just bought a new car. Well, guess who felt better than her? <laughs> Me. And I look out there and I see some of these vehicles that the, the people, employees are driving and it just gives me pride that they, they're, they came to work, they're able to buy houses, to do things like this. I mean, that's, that's the satisfaction that you're looking for as, a, as an entrepreneur. The money has nothing to do with it. It'll come if you work hard, it'll come. But just, just be proud of what you're, what you're doing and the people that you employ. That's what was your word? What was your word? My word is opportunity. opportunity. And that really it comes down to opportunity. You have an opportunity to make a difference. In our business, it's kind of, we think it's kind of unique because we're in, we're in the renewable energy business, right? And we, we love the idea of putting something on their home that's gonna reduce the, the, the cost of fossil fuels, the use of fossil fuels. And I'm not talking from a tree hugger standpoint, I'm just talking about from a realist standpoint. So we have an opportunity to make a difference and the people that come with us, they, they, that's why they come with us. We, they say, hey, look, you know, I wanna be involved in this, I wanna be involved in this, this movement, so opportunity.
I wanted to talk about what Shailish said just for a second. He, he said something about core values, and I, I want to tell you how important that is because it really helps you make better decisions about what you want to do. And when opportunities come along, you can compare those opportunities against your core values and be able to make a better, more informed choice. Um, for instance, I had a, a client in my office the other day, it's a couple, they're farmers and they really love farming and they're so happy about it and they want to expand their farming operation and I was really on board with that and excited for them. We're talking about pig farming and cattle farming and buying some land and then they said, oh, there's a convenience store for sale right near us too, we could do that. Uh, well, that doesn't sound to me like it aligns with your core values, why would you want to do that? That's a very full-time job, probably full-time job for both of you all the time, um, is that really what you want? And so they walked out feeling much better because that told them right then that's not an opportunity for them. Anyway, my word is community, and we need to take our community seriously. It's um, great to have people around us, but we have to choose them wisely. Um, when you're an entrepreneur, you really truly need a team around you that can help you because you can't know everything. I see people all the time that try to do it themselves. They want to do everything themselves. They want to do their bookkeeping themselves. They want to do their marketing themselves. They want to do th their job, whatever it is. If they're a plumber, they do that too by themselves. They think they're saving money and the truth is they're not. They need a team if they have a bigger vision. If they just want to be a plumber, one man show, great. You'll get referrals, do a good job, and, and you can do that pretty easily. But if you have a bigger vision, you need for sure to have a community around you. Those people will choose them so that they are encouraging to you, they help you, they provide a service or um, have a skill that you don't have. So you can utilize them without having to learn something brand new all over again. And you know, learning something's great and you can, you can learn anything on the internet and I suggest that you do learn what you need to learn on the internet. Um, but there's no replacement for the experience of your community. They come to you with um, a lot of knowledge and have seen a lot of things that you don't have. So really build a team around yourself. I've done that in this business. I never did it in my other businesses. So I think that's part of the reason that I failed because I tried to do everything myself and you just can't. So this time I have a big tribe around me. They're awesome people, always um, encouraging, uplifting, and I've made good choices that way and it, it makes it much easier to be successful. So my word is brand. And I want to tie that back into the comment I made earlier about the entrepreneurial mindset being 24/7, 365. Your brand is kind of is what people think about when they think of you or your organization. Um, from the Daytona Regional Chamber standpoint, t uh, I, my goal is for people when they hear our name to think that's the premier business advocacy organization in the region. And we are an advocate for businesses of all size. Teresa is a member of our chamber with one person on staff, technically. Shailish is a member of the chamber with 10 people. And then we've got folks like Halifax Health or Brown and Brown who have thousands of employees. The challenge is making sure your brand is consistent across all of those areas. If you try to be all things to all people, very quickly you're gonna be nothing to nobody. So it's a very, um, sometimes in my, in my shoes, e even more challenging than if I were making the decisions on my own company because I feel responsibility for the history of our organization as well. We just a couple of years ago celebrated 100 years in operation. So I, I take that very seriously. We've got a century's worth of expertise in advocating for our business community so that we can have an atmosphere that creates entrepreneurs and provides a fertile ground for startup ideas and for existing businesses to thrive. Um, but I also say that the reason I tied that to the 24-7, 365 idea is I'm not so naive to think that people don't associate me with the Daytona Regional Chamber of Commerce even when I'm not working. So if I run into somebody at the grocery store on a Saturday, they may, if, we, if I've known them prior to my time with the chamber, they may say, oh, it's Ken, now oh, I got to run into Ken today. 
if I've met them through my time at our organization, regardless of what I do, they're gonna know me as Ken from the Daytona Regional Chamber. Those two things are, inex are, are inextricably combined all the time. So it's interesting to me when you look at the, the entrepreneurial mindset and how do you make yourself successful in business, some of the things that I see people do, particularly in an era of social media, that seems to actively undermine, undermine their business success. Things that they post, things that they share, and I'm like, why would you post that and potentially alienate half of your clientele? That doesn't sound like a, a smart business plan to me, but that's part of your brand. Um, I, I want for people to think of the Daytona Regional Chamber as the place they need to go to when they need help with their business, not in their business. And those are, it's a wide ranging thing. It could be advocacy. It could be uh, something that, that the state legislature is considering passing. Uh, there's an issue before us now with, uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the state's unemployment compensation trust fund has been decimated because so many people were out of work. So what does that mean to the business owners that are here in the room today? Well, that fund has to be replaced because people will come in and out of work just in the natural cycle of business, not even counting a, a situation like that. We're advocating there's an opportunity to pass an online sales tax that is not a new tax, but is a, an opportunity that's already out there that would increase revenue into the state without putting the burden on our local businesses and actually levels the playing field with our local mom and pop operations because they're trying to compete with businesses out of state that aren't having to submit that tax. So our local businesses have to charge more because they have to submit the tax. The, the challenge is if the way we're advocating for this tax, the funds that will be used for will help to mitigate and rebuild that unemployment compensation trust fund. So what does that mean to these folks here on the table? What well, could be the difference between a $7 per employee tax going to unemployment compensation or an $80 per employee tax going towards unemployment compensation? They're all busy doing their business, their stuff. They don't have the time to advocate that. That's what we do and that's our brand. We help them establish themselves in an environment to be successful and make it as easy as possible for them to do what they do so they can continue in business and provide new cars for employees and bonuses and TVs and great Christmas parties. <laughs> that's, what, that's what our brand is in the community related to entrepreneurialism. All right, my word is persistence. And what a great word. Uh, two other words go with it, determination and consistency. Uh, to be able to pursue, pursue your goals, to be persistent on it, um, no matter how old you are. Elon Musk's mother was 60 years old when she started her business. My father was 51, and my father-in-law was 82 when he decided to venture into another business. So regardless, if you are able to be persistent, determined, and if you are consistent, then those will make you successful. Consistency is a must. Being able to show your employees that you are dedicated, showing up on work on time, showing that you are on the jobs when they need you, showing up to be able to like, be that consistency, but at the same time, your employees have to understand their boundaries. You can't have your employees rely on you. You just have to be consistent with that. Uh, determination, just being able to be be determined on no matter what, whatever goal you set, whatever KPIs you set, you're just going to succeed on that. Those are gonna be very um, key points. And just being persistent, going after those two other words is going to allow you to be successful. I wanted to ask Dr. Tillman if she, because we're, we're out of time, if you wanted to say a few words since you sat through the presentations and you've got students that are participating in both our live and virtual. And then, of course, Dr. Weems just walked in, who's running this entire show, right? <laughs> and the Mary Carl workforce and continuing ed college. So. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, good morning, everyone. To our entrepreneurs, thank you. Um, I can't wait to get the airing of this because I'm going to spread it around to so many students. Um, I've heard so many great things from you all as far as the mindset 
and the key terms that were used. So always remember, pour into yourself. And then when others see that you're pouring into yourself, we'll support you. We'll help you with the resources. We talked about community. We talked about action, persistence. All of these are key to making sure that you are who you are and you are where you want to be. So this is a great opportunity for you all now to continue on this path. Of course, there's gonna be stumbling blocks, that's life. But never give up on yourself. That's the key to life. Thank you. And at least those three on stage wanna do Zoom presentations for your students. So <laughs> all they need from us is a day and time. Good morning, and to the students, uh, I just want to continue to encourage you um, to pursue, pursue your interests, pursue your passions, and um, find your grit, because all of what you're hearing, you're, you're accumulating knowledge, and that's critical, it's critically important to your success, that you have the knowledge base, but you also have to combine that with the grit. So your determination to get to your goal is what will drive you. There are opportunities all around, and you have to really understand how you uh, keep your eyes open, your ears tuned, inclined to hear, and then understand how to process that. So a lot's being thrown at you through the Entrepreneurial Mindset Opportunity Program. It's, it's critical that you take advantage of everything, sort it through, and then determine what best works for you. Um, for example, we have the El Gail Lemmerin series speaker event coming up next week. There's an application online for scholarships for $1,000 to support your dream. And I do such, I, I would expect all of you to have already applied for that scholarship <laughs> because that helps you with building your wealth, right? That letter that you write will help you think about what that brand looks like for you in terms of how you um, sort your pathway out. It demonstrates your ability to take action in a reasonable way it helps you to create that network that's so important in terms of making the connections. So every time an entrepreneurial um, representative comes before us to speak about their journey, their passion, their encouragement, you know, they're pouring into you. you know, they're sharing with you um, things that they probably wish they had known 20 years ago before they started the process. So what an opportunity this is. So I just want you to continue to pay attention and take advantage of all that we have to offer. And also, I'm gonna challenge you to bring something back to the table. As you're learning, I want you to share. Okay, so the next time we meet, you're not gonna be so quiet. Okay, we wanna start hearing from you because you're learning and it's time to start sharing and giving back. We'll grow from what it is that you're learning. And to our panelists, thank you always for giving time to Daytona State College Thank you for supporting our Entrepreneurial Mindset Opportunity Initiative. This is so brand new to us, and we're just finding our way. We have great resources uh, surrounding us to help us make sure that we are putting one foot in front of the other and making the pathway clear and deliverable to our students. So thank you for answering the call. We really appreciate your time and your concern for the development of our students as they continue their pathway as entrepreneurial um, leaders you know in our community either as workplace participants or as ceos right so congratulations to you all for knowing what you need to do <laughs> and thank you to you all of you for for being here to support us thank you and with that we stand adjourned